Okay. We come friends again and today we have another new topic that is concerning la the lungs but uh, on this session we will look about the disease that affects the pleural lining in the lungs. Let's start with an uh, introduction. What are the pleural? What you have to know that the pleural uh, are the serous membrane uh, which fold back into themselves and then they form a true layered membrane as the structures. This uh, two layered membrane structure will be in the outer layers and then uh, the inner layers. The outer layers is what is called the parietal layers, and the inner layer is what is called the visceral pleura or inner pleura. But in between, between these are uh, two layers or pleura, you find what is called the pleural cavity. And this uh, is the pleural cavity, the one that is the is, 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 Feed up with the pure fruit. This is just a, a short diagrammatical uh, the representation about the, what we talked about the pleura. You know, you see these are lungs, and this is the region of the of what is our interest. And once you magnify it more, you will see that this outer one is what is called the parietal pleura, and this inner one is what is called the visceral pleura. And this uh, are the lungs. So, as you see, that the visceral pleura is a pleura that lines the lungs. But this one, the parietal pleura, is a pleura that is lining the inner wall of the chest. And uh, what are the concept you have to know that uh, the visceral pleura is not sensitive to pain, and the and the parietal one is uh, sensitive to pain. So, what makes the visceral to be not sensitive to pain, and the while the parietal one do so? The, each, the effect is due to the innervation. The parietal pleura is innervated by the nerves, so it's sensitive to pain. And uh, the inner one, what's, which is called visceral, is not innervated. That's why it's not sensitive to pain. This is just the histological presentation of, uh, of the, the pleural membranes. You see, these are alveoles alveoles or air sacs and this is an alveolar wall alveolar wall that is lined, uh, lined by a thin membrane and this is a connective tissue and this is a pleural cavity this one the pleural cavity pleural cavity it means outer here uh, the pleural cavity you see there is a parietal pleura and the inner here this is a visceral pleura and this uh, visceral pleura you will see there are the mesocerial thera layers Mesocerial cell layer that are slow, uh, are small cuboidal cells, which are called the mesocerial cell layers. As I have said, that uh, for today's topic, what is our main concern is about the disorder or disease that affects the pleura. And the disease that affects the pleura is divided into several groups, uh, by which we have inflammatory diseases, we have also pneumothorax, we have non-inflammatory uh, diseases, and also we have uh, tumors. It means in this session, we will part the session into uh, three parts. Uh, the first part is about is the part that discuss the disease affecting the pleura due to inflammatory actions, and the second one is due to non-inflammatory action, and the third one is uh, tumors of the lungs. And uh, the another concept in these are uh, these affecting the pleura is that uh, usually the disease that are uh, affected to the pleura are the secondary due to the sum of the underlying uh, disease. It means the disease affecting the pleura originates or comes after the presence of uh, some of the disease affecting the lungs, for example, pneumonia, tuberculosis. <coughs> but you want to know uh, is that you should be aware about this uh, group of the pleural disease. We have the pleural effusion. It means the fluid effused and accumulate in the pleural. We have pneumothorax. It means air accumulate in the pleural cavity. We have hemothorax. It means pure blood will accumulate in the in the in the pleural. And we have empyema, which means the accumulation of pus. We have chylosolax. It means uh, accumulation of uh, milk fluids. We have also other conditions like uh, pleural thickening, uh, pleural uh, calcifications. This can occur secondary after the 
the prior to be affected by the disease. Now, last thing you have to know the tumors affecting the prior. Uh, as I've said, let's start with the disease that origin due to inflammation. And the uh, inflammation of the pleura is called the pleuritis or pleuris. And the inflammation uh, can be grouped into three groups. We have cellars or cellars fibrinas or fibrinas or pleuritis. We have superlative uh, pleuritis, something we can call it, uh, an empyema. And also we have uh, hemorrhagic uh, pleuritis. So we are going to see one after another. Let's start with the cellars or cellars fibrinas are pleuritis <coughs> or priolis. Cellars priolis means there is accumulation of the cellars fluid in the priolo cavity. And once you say the cellars fibrinas, it means there is a mixture between uh, that, that is a, a mixed uh, pattern. It means you have uh, cellars and fibrinas materials within the priolo cavity. So what are the causes of their uh, of this kind of the inflammation? First one is due to the inflammatory disease that occur within the lungs, like tuberculosis, pneumonia, infection, and the lung abscess. So this can cause the accumulation of the cellars or therofibrinous uh, fluid in the periodic cavity. And sometimes may occur due to the systemic disease like rheumatoid arthritis, systemic alopas uh, arthromatous. And also can happen due to uremia. But uh, they are uh, accumulation of cellars or cerofibrinous uh, uh, fibrinous fluid uh, accumulating in the pleural cavity occur okay, due to the Im metastatic involvement of the pleural. And the last cause is the irradiations. What are the outcome? Are the outcome of this uh, kind <coughs> of information? First is a resorption. The resorption will lead to the resolution. Mm -hmm. Second is that there will occur the repeated attack. This repeated attack may lead to the organizations that will cause the fibrous uh, additions. If someone have, uh, has repeated attacks, have repeated uh, pattern of this uh, kind of, uh, of uh, information, therefore what will occur is organizations and once organization it means that there are organizations as a body as a body uh, healing response once organization occurs it means that we call will occur the fibrina fibrous assertions since the body tends to to just to cover that effect that has occurred in the plural so once uh, the body make it for to cover that uh, part or what is, uh, will happen in the fibrin fibrous additions and this will may lead to the some of the pattern of this that's called the fibrosis. <coughs> Another uh, outcome that uh, can occur the respiratory embarrassment. Respiratory embarrassment means that there's uh, the sudden uh, breathing, but it's a shallow one, shallow one, and this is caused by the due to the massive accumulation of these uh, fluid. Let's come to uh, another uh, another kind of uh, the inflammation, which is called the superlative uh, pruritis, or sometimes called the empyema, which means this accumulation of the of the pus in the pleural cavity, and then once this accumulates, it can cause inflammation to the inflammation to the membrane lining the pleural, and this usually implies the bacterial. Or mycotic seedling. It means there are bacterial or fungal growth in the pleural cavity. And sometimes can uh, occur due to the spread of the organism from uh, intrapulmonary uh, infection. But later it uh, can be due to the hematogenous or lymphatic uh, spread. What are the outcome of the suppurative uh, pleuritis? One of the outcome is that. <coughs> You have to know that the pus is an oxidate. So once the occur organization of an oxidate will cause the formation of dense and the tough fibrous assertion. And sometimes this can result to the obliteration of the pleural space. It will obliterate the pleural space. And uh, 
Sometimes an outcome may occur the classification, classification. The classification uh, that occurred due to the scar tissue and the tip. Also, let's uh, see the last uh, of the inflammatory uh, pattern that uh, affects the pleural, which is called hemorrhagic pleuritis. Hemorrhagic pleuritis means there is a accumulation of blood in the pleura that will cause inflammation to the pleura. You have to know that two concepts between hemorrhagic and hemothorax. This both means there is a blood in the pleural cavity, but what makes them differ is that in hemothorax, hemothorax is, 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 is a non-inflammatory one, but hemorrhagic is an inflammatory one. So if hemorrhagic is inflammatory, you will see the inflammatory cells and or exfoliated tumor cells in an accident. So we expect that uh, in hemorrhagic pleuritis to see the inflammatory cells like uh, uh, neutrophils and some of the macrophage if so, it's so chronic. But for the case of hemothorax, it means uh, we don't expect to see these inflammatory cells. So that's what makes the hemorrhagic and the hemothorax differ. So what are the causes of the of the of the of the hemorrhagic pleuritis? One of the causes is due to metastatic involvement of the pleura. Metastatic it means that this is the unsystemic effect. It means there is a disease somewhere, and this disease can affect the pleura. And it means uh, and, uh, another way to say metastatic it means it's not a primary. It's not originated there. It means uh, the disease uh, comes after there is a disease somewhere. Suppose there is a cancer in the breast. Cancer in the breast, therefore, will it metastatize and go and affect the pleura. That's called a metastatic one. And sometimes breeding disorders like hemophilia. <coughs> and also infections like Likertio infection. Okay, as I've told that in this part, we discuss the inflammatory ways in which it can affect the pleura that lie in the lungs. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and uh, don't forget to attend the second session that uh, we discuss about uh, the non-inflammatory pleural efficiency, how they affect the lungs. Thanks and welcome again, my brothers and sisters.